I just about spilled my tea there on my face. I'm not even going to cut that out. My Telecaster has been swapped to the Les Paul because the Telecaster is down a tone and sports flat ones. This is for the purpose of a guitar lesson video, which this is. This is a regular tuned guitar. As I wipe the tea off my face. It is a guitar lesson video delivered to you by a guy who doesn't really have a clue what he's doing. He's just got a big toolbox and that opening thing was the equivalent or the result of me just flicking through my toolbox and out comes this tool and that chord and this chord and that fits great, keep that in this one. That's all that was. So let's embark on the most amateurish guitar lesson ever. But it might blow some of your minds because it blew my mind, this concept. Here's the concept. Here's a melody. The E major scale. Just as an example, it could be any melody you want, but the concept is this. Who's to say you can't put a chord behind every single note? So you go chord, 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 right? If you gave it to a committee and said, but what chords? A committee would come out probably with this. The first note would be the A chord. The second note, they'd probably vote in favor of a B minor. It's like the cooler people in the committee might say take the pinky off because it still implies that not even though you're no longer playing it a B minor 7 implies that but for the sake of clarity we'll put the pinky on so there's note 1 chord A a B minor gives you chord A note number 2 up 2 frets gives you chord gives you that note there note number 3 what's that a C sharp minor is it this note here can be delivered by a D chord 
bring this note here to be delivered by an E chord or perhaps a minor 7 chord from there and this note here could be delivered by an F sharp minor and this note here I'm going to get that delivered by an E chord on the B string and the final chord A now that's the concept but who's to say you have to put the boring old chords voted in by the committee you could do something like this That was a very simple melody I just played there, but putting the Eric Johnson idea behind it. Some nice little harm, harmony type ideas in there as well, which are just from chords. So that's a great concept. Have fun with that. But you need chords. Now, I don't approach it from a knowledgeable theory point of view. For example, just before recording this video, to put the concept together, I had to, rather than just copy the intro that I played, I thought, I need something interesting to give me. Now, if I knew what I was doing, I could use my brain to do it, but I don't know what I'm doing, so I just had to rummage around and think, there's a chord that's got that note. There's another one that's got that note. There's another one that's got that note. There's another one. And there's one. And, and throw the ones out that don't fit, but I do have a large vocabulary of chords, and I've got a streetwise ability to kind of know which one might fit. Maybe an augmented, maybe a diminished, maybe a whatever that is. I don't even know what that is. So what I played there was, it's a bit like a nine chord, only with your first finger. If I played that, it would be nine. But if I just played, taking that off and putting it there, it's not a B9, it's got nothing to do with a B9, it's now a F sharp minor 6 chord, is that a minor 6 chord? Because of this would be the 6th note, but who cares? You saw me work it out in my head there what that is, but I don't really care, but it's a great chord. So, here are just a few chords I suggest you learn. You can find out what they're called if you want. I don't know what they're called. I don't particularly care. But it allows you, if you can learn the following chords, you might have fun with the exercise I just introduced to you. Here goes. Right, chord number one. Learn the following chords. That's the one we just talked about. A bit like a D9 on the first finger on the thick string. Give me an E minor 6. Then, an inversion of an E minor. That's just... The pinky there. So, over this one. That's the same as that. Don't know what it's called. It's a bit like a diminished, only up a string. But played here, I'm just barring everything on the seventh fret and putting the middle finger on the eighth fret of the A. Resolving to what would be the five, which is an E7, just like a C7, only brought up, but raise the first finger a semitone. To get a flat two or a raised one, whatever you want to call that. So far that's sounding like gypsy jazz. some sort of augmented with a drop something or other. What about this one? There's an E9 chord, but take the first finger, the pinky finger up a tone and play instead of that. Here's another one. You can see what I'm doing there? 
I'm just playing melodies. But sticking with the Eric Johnson concept, putting chords behind them. I hope you know your diminished chords. Your augmented chords. So that's just. Barring everything on the fourth fret, but adding the G and B strings on the fifth fret. Here's another one. E minor with a bit on the top. And instead of the root being there, I'm just taking that down a tone. Get that sort of sound. Here's another one, I went like this. And then dragged it down. So all that is. Think of a, an E minor, then think of an E minor 7 by taking the pinky off. Then think of moving that ring finger up one semitone. Now that's painful, so I would just use your pinky. And then you're left with, I don't know what it is. It's beautiful. I don't play the thick E, I'm just playing the, the thickest five strings. Sorry, the thinnest five strings. And I just drag it down to there for no other reason than I tried fret by fret what sounded kind of cool. And to me that sounded really cool to go from there to there. And then I did that, which was just the same as we did there. And then I think I played this, I'm augmented. Um, Steely Dan, they love to do things like this. Call it. Think of an A7, but then no, don't think of an A7 at all. Just think of well, there's an A7. But you add this here, but you play the A string. Normally you would fret that there, but you play the the fretted A string and you get this. another idea, arpeggiating chords. So at one point I went, so that was uh, actually from a recent, or influenced by a recent Tom Bukovac thing. And I went, then when I arpeggiated the next chord, I, it's an F major seven, I wanted to spell out, so I did it in the Eric Johnson fashion. And then a G7. That's just, there's your F major 7. That's not part of the chord, but it just sounds nice. It's just G7. So, another great idea to incorporate. And my favourite is to do it like this sometimes. I'll go... Then a D minor seven. And a G. So here's one for you. Robin Ford, Midnight Comes Too Soon. A treasure drove of chords. There's your minor six. And then check this. This is the one I want to show you. So it's over a five chord, so the ninth fret has your E string, D string, and G string, and your first finger is on your seventh fret of your B, and 
it's very important to let that ring because that is spelling out your five chord. Then you're ringing middle finger down a semitone, but everything else stays the same. So in context. The minor six that we had earlier today. Structure your whole hand in E minor 7 in Hendrix. And that one is just what we did earlier today the C7 shape dragged up into your 5 chord position, but this up a semitone to give that sound. So when I play it like that, Hendrix, I just then flatten that on the take off the Hendrix note. And then your minor 6. probably bored the pants off you by now so if you're still here thank you very much for bearing with me i hope some of this has helped and um, the more chords you know then just it's just pandora's box is open you just suddenly got so much more at your disposal whether you arpeggiate these chords whether you use them as alternates to more mainstream chords and it just your whole guitar playing becomes much more colorful and then you get into jazz Anyway, have a lovely day. See you in the next one. Bye for now.